like red cards, and maybe from the outside looking in, he hasn't been at the same level since. Is, is that kind of fair? Uh, I think, again, probably indicative of our season, he, he's kind of, you know, he's, he has been very good at times, but he hasn't really got a flow. He got, obviously got, he got suspended and, you know, he went away for the African nation. So it, it's very, very hard for any player to sort of maintain certain levels if you're not, you know, got some sort of consistency in, in game time and in consistency in, in kind of flow and, you know, I think I think he's been better the last few weeks. I think you know he, he kind of, like I said, because he was so disruptive in that middle of the year, like a lot of others, he just wasn't really getting up to the levels that he that he showed earlier in the year. But I think he's been better the last few games, and um, yeah, the challenge for him is to to kind of work his way through that. Um, you know, I still think he's been a really important player for us this year, and. Uh, you know, when he when he is sort of playing at the levels we know he can play, it, it makes us a much more difficult team to stop. So, um, yeah, you know, I guess that's his challenge. He was left out with Marley's board for these internationals. I mean, how is he? Is he frustrated that the way he sees himself? Um, no, I, I, I don't sense that in him. I think you know, I think he's like everyone else. Like I said, like us as a club, you know, we we kind of haven't really hit the heights on a consistent level we want to but, but that's okay that's that's where we're at and that's where he's at and that's where a lot of the, the group are at and the challenge is to fight through that and, and sort of make sure that you, you come out the other side being stronger and more consistent. Thanks. Tom? Uh, it was a challenging first game for the Rally Dragons against, against Flo, but he strikes me as a kind of person who, by all accounts, a great trainer, chomping a bit to get another chance. Obviously you mentioned Mickey is available. I mean, is that... Is that Oh, I hope so. I mean, that's why he's here. He didn't come to, to sort of play one game. But, um, you know, I don't think against Fulham, you know, he was any better or worse than anyone else. I think, like I said, I thought we were, we as a team, as a collective, were really, you know, nowhere near the competitive levels we wanted to be. And so it wasn't reflective of him. But, uh, you know, we, we signed Rody because we see, you know, player who can contribute in there and um, you know he's had to bite his time a little bit because obviously with Mickey and, and, and Romero you know they're, they're pretty strong partnership there he's had to wait for his chance but well, we knew his chance would come and, and, he, and he came you know whether it was at Villa the week before or, or full, at Fulham and um, he's ready he's available he, you know he played for Romania during the break and um, yeah we see him as part of our future. Like I said, I, with all these things, there's always, you know, there's always costs and benefits to it, and you, you try and weigh them all up. You know, my, you know, my involvement in that is more around the, the footballing aspect. You know, but you know, th this is a club decision we're making here that we take all these factors into account, and we've we, we kind of thought that, you know, with with our season being so disrupted, not a lot of games, this was a unique opportunity for us. Um, I wouldn't see it as something that, that would happen on a regular basis, unless, as I said, you know, there was a. We felt the benefits would, would outweigh the costs, and um, on this occasion, when we balanced everything up, we thought it was a good opportunity for us to again take take the club to the other side of the world and, and sort of um, you know help us uh, continue to grow the football club, and um, you know that's why the decision was made. And just finally, back to the Richardson incident. Um, he mentioned about feeling like he was wanting to give up, which can, it's hard to know exactly what he meant by that, but if he meant football-wise, um, which makes me the least serious version of that, did you get a sense at the time that was a player who was questioning that, because it would have been about sort of September, quite early into your tenure? Look, I, I, look, I'm really reluctant to talk about details about that stuff. I, I think... It's better Richie tells his story. I just don't think it adds any sort of... It would be unfair of me to, to kind of add to that narrative because I, co I could reveal or say something that, you know, he doesn't want. You know, I think the story is always better told by the person who's involved. And, and 
you know, from my perspective, as I've always said, I, I kind of, what I try and do with all the players is provide an environment where, you know, they feel comfortable and safe enough to seek any help they do need. Now, you know, whether it's Richie or other players who have seeked or, or needed help this year, what we've tried to do in my role in that is to try and steer them towards that and, and you know, also, you know, as I think I've said in the past, to, to hopefully give them some perspective around, you know, that, that, you know, whatever the issue may be, it doesn't have to be overwhelming in that it, it, it sort of takes over your whole life. And, uh, you know, f from a football perspective anyway, if we just narrow it to that, my kind of main bits of advice to him was more around get your body right because I knew he was struggling with his body at the time as well. So, you know, when you've got things and they become overwhelming, just chip away one at a time and, and it'll help you rather than try and tackle it all at once. So just it's a very different way of asking the question is because it was so striking and I mean I haven't seen players talk about that before, you know, so you deal with players you know you've had players across your whole career mm. and have private mental players coming mm. but did it have an effect on the club at all sort of you know, it's so it's so sort of revelatory that a player can feel that way. Yeah. <coughs> no, but and I'll tell you why, because it's not that uncommon. And no, it's not. Well, not in my experience. I've always had, because like I keep saying, they're human beings, but for the most part, we, it's dealt behind closed doors. And it's why it's always probably really difficult for you guys to do your job, because you never have all the information. And you never will, because there's so much that goes on in football clubs if you could just sort of expand that out to your life and just treat a football club like any other industry, you'll realise that in every other industry, you've got people who are struggling with things. Football's no different. But we kind of, you know, we, 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 we've got a pretty strong sort of curtain that we can put up and, and it kind of gets all hidden behind there. But um, I guess it's, it's striking because, you know, people haven't come, or players or whether that's managers, players or people involved in football haven't come out publicly before, but I can assure you that um, no greater but no lesser than any other part of society that, that there, there are problems that these players and people involved in our industry deal with and the amount of money you have in the bank balance or your fame doesn't shield you from that. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's, well, I mean, everyone who's fit. I mean, we literally we leave straight after the last game, so yeah, we'll be taking it over everyone who's fit. Would you understand if there was some nervousness from Gareth Southgate, for example? Well, you know, I'm sure Gareth will be a club coach one day, and he'll get a different perspective of it as he has been in the past. I don't think Gareth said anything that, or any other national team manager. I, I was a national team manager, and you know, I used to sweat over every weekend when the players were playing, whether that's a normal game, friendly game, whatever game it is. Um, and the flip side of that is that there's quite a few club coaches who are on edge with national team duty this week. So it's a world we live in, mate. This is a new fixture to be kind of inserted into the calendar. Yeah, yeah. A bit like new tournaments are always inserted into the fixture, isn't it? National team tournaments. So whether you're a club coach or national team coach, these are this is the world we live in. There's got to be a balance. Like I said, we've, we've thought it through as a football club and um, look, it's fair to say that if we'd been in Europe and we'd had a really big season that we probably would have made a different decision, but we weighed everything up and we felt like um, there's a real benefit for us to, uh, to play this game. Can I just ask about something separate as well, like kind of physical conditioning of players and, and how that's kind of changed over the course of your career, what the kind of different emphasis maybe is now, maybe what it was ten years ago, how has that changed over the last couple of years? Yeah, look, uh, it's changed enormously. Oh, it has enormously. I mean, I, I think that the, the two sort of biggest areas of change when I think about sort of the, the 26, 27 years I've been managing are, are around, um, you know, the, the sports science and, and, and the technology available um, from an anal analytics perspective um, to sort of assist you in your role. Um, you know, again, not unusual as just the like the sort of everything else in life technology has kind of taken over. Um, it's certainly infiltrated into football as well. 
and uh, and the sports science area. So the way you prepare players, the kind of the tools we have now to measure, you know, how much they're working, what you know, what levels they're working, you know, what kind of um, gives us great data to understand you know, how they are as individual athletes, all those kind of things. It's changed enormously. Um, yeah, you know, there's still some basic fundamentals there. A lot of it comes around to how you, your game model looks and what kind of football you want to play. And um, you know, I think most clubs now sort of tailor their training program around the kind of football they want to play on a weekend. And um, so, yes, there's been. You know, I think it's probably still the areas of greatest growth you're going to get, or well, not growth, but sort of development in the game is 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 in in those spaces. Yeah, it's it's well, you know. I mean, it, it depends on your experience, but because I have been in a game, I, you know, more often than not, my gut feeling and my eyes pretty accurate. But if the data tells me something totally different, then I'll go with the data um, if it's the right data. But it's like everything in life; you get you get information. I mean, I my I think I said before, my major function every day is to make decisions. I'll, I'll make good decisions if I've got good information. So. I try and get the best information I can, and, and by that I mean, you know, good people around you, the best people around you, and you know, they get access to, to the data and the, they feed it into me, and then it's up to me to make the right decisions from there. But when I was a Celtic, mate, I was the link with, I mean, the Scottish press are, are beautiful, mate. They, <laughs> not that you guys are, uh, and, and not, not casting any shadows on them, but they could throw up some names, mate. But um, he's, been, he's been brilliant, mate. No, he's, he's had an unbelievable season. And it, it's, it's a credit to him because I think, you know, sometimes, particularly when players have sort of been at the highest level and he's still at a good age, you know, people can sort of write their demise pretty quickly and, and write them off. But... I think he's been outstanding this year. He's like really consistent. You can see the quality he has as a footballer, but he's also you know, taken on the the task of being kind of the main catalyst for for Luton. You know, he's the one in there who's got the experience, who's got the quality, and he hasn't shirked the battle. He's, he's been outstanding for them. Yeah, absolutely, and 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 look, I think, yeah, you know, I guess, yeah, you know, when when players do speak out uh, or, or kind of bring it into a public space, because that, to be fair, they're under no obligation to, because it is it, these are all private things that all of us, like I said, go through, and you know, I'm not sure how anyone else feels, but you know, if you are going through something really, you know. Difficult. You don't necessarily want everyone to know about it, you know, because you know sometimes you know that doesn't help you finding the solution to it. So you know, when 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 players in particular come out, I think it helps because uh, then other people kind of can see that you know there is a way back from that. You know, it doesn't have to be um, sort of like I said. I keep saying uh, overwhelming, where you think it 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 kind of. You know, stops you in, in in achieving what you want to achieve, and um, but you know, um, I'm sure you know whether it's Ross or Richie, they'll be the first to admit. Yeah, you know, they've shared dressing rooms with other guys who've just been through just as difficult a time. We just don't know about it. Just slightly random one, Jared Gillett's the referee tomorrow. Hmm. Um, he became the Prem's first overseas ref when he came over. There's been some calls in the past. You know, a bit like like clubs signed the best players. There's been some calls that the PGM and have made just some of the best referees from around the world. Do you, do you think that's some of that you'd like to see happen, you know, get the best referees from, from around the world? Um, oh, mate. Oh, yeah, that's a random one, mate. Um, <laughs> Yeah, not something I've given a lot of thought. Look, I mean, I think like any other profession, you want to get the best people. I, th I don't think that, that the refereeing you know, profession is any different. Um, you know, obviously, 
you know, like any other kind of nation, you, you kind of want to try and sort of promote the people because, you know, again, when you decide that you want to become a referee, it's, it's a fairly hard road you're kind of embarking on irrespective of where you do it and I reckon for any referee to reach this level they've they've shown some um, intestinal fortitude to overcome things and I think it's probably incumbent on all federations to say well you know the people who've come through their own system should get the preference but you know particularly when you're talking about the Premier League you know you are you're trying to attract the best of everything then you know I think trying to get the best referees, uh, I see some logic in that, but that's my best answer to a random <coughs> question, mate. We'll finish with you, please. Uh, you've always said that you were happy with each other in this form. Do you think we're about to see any better version of being um, it's, it's, it's hard to say because, again, you know, I think I spoke at the time is that I think. Yeah, you know, part of the challenge is um, understanding that the problems we have are not that unique, and that we can still perform, provided you know, like I said, you know, you get the right help and support. So, but it doesn't guarantee anything, you know, because whether it's Richie or anyone else, I guarantee you there'll be another challenge along the way somewhere. Uh, hopefully, what you learn is that you know with the right support, whether that's, you know, addressing it yourself as an individual or seeking help from somebody else, then, you know, there is a way forward. But there's no guarantees of anything, you know, whether that's, you know, for me, you want to guarantee good performance, you know, train well, do all the right things on and off the field, prepare yourself well, and then you give yourself a chance to play good football. Yeah, I've never felt the reason to because, again, um, unless, the, obviously, if, 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 if and again, I, I, I'm really reluctant to talk about specifics, but if anyone came to me with, with any kind of issue, my first sort of inclination will be to, to try and help them. And, you know, whilst I'm wise beyond my years, I don't have a handle on everything in life. And I've got my own, you know, like all of us, I've got, my own demons that I need to deal with at different times and you know um, so I, I, I'm really reluctant to offer advice unless I feel really comfortable it's in a space where you know I've got some experience um, but most of my experience tells me to try and direct them to people who can really help that situation um, so you know um, whatever kind of advice I give I, I try and do with some sort of balanced view on, on you know what the person needs. Yeah, but see, there you go, you know, so I wouldn't speak about specifically about anyone else. What makes you think I'd speak about myself, you know, and, 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 you, and, you, and it's okay to ask that question. I'm, I'm certainly not saying you, you don't have a right, but I don't think in any other walk of life would we walk up to somebody we barely knew and ask them whether they've got any, you know, issues around those areas. And I think that's where we've always got to be respectful. I think it's different when, when a someone like Richie comes out and then I think okay well that's in the public forum and I think he's doing it for the right reasons but it's why when I come here sometimes and I get asked questions and I you know I, I, I don't give all the information it's not because I'm trying to be tricky it's because I think all of us in life you know have have a space that we want to keep private and, and I'm certainly always you know conscious of that that I don't speak out of turn, particularly when I talk about individual players or individuals within the group. Okay, thank you.